Hey guys, it's Chris from Holden, and in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at Panasonic's latest firmware update for their PTZs that brings to the table that built-in auto tracking. And the best part is it's a completely free update. Now this update is out right now for the UE40 and the UE50, with the UE80 to come later this year. I've got a UE50 here for this demo, and to look at the auto tracking controls and the parameters that we get, we just need to jump into the web UI by typing the IP address within a web browser on a computer on the same network, where now at the top, we have an auto tracking tab. Now tracking is super simple to engage. We can simply turn it on and the camera will then pick up whoever is in frame and start to track them. We do also have some framing options, upper body for a tighter shot or full body to keep it relatively wide. And if you turn this off, then the camera will just keep the same framing that you've set prior to tracking starting. There'll be no zooming in and out. Now, if the camera loses the subject, you can set it so that it reverts to a preset or a general wide shot. And then when someone is detected again, it will automatically start to track and revert back to that framing that you've set. There's the ability to set a limit for the pan and tilt ranges so that even if the camera is following someone and then they walk past this pan limit, for example, the camera will not move any further. And if the subject is lost, again, it reverts back to that safety position that you set. Now, this is a really useful feature to have if you're using these cameras covering a presenter on a stage. You want the camera to follow that person as they walk around the stage and they present, but of course you don't want to follow that person should they then walk off the stage. And the likelihood is if they walk off the stage, another person is gonna come on and then take over to present. Another useful tool to build on this is using masks. So from the web UI, you can actually designate areas of the framing where you don't want the system to detect any people. Now, a really nice feature is that if we turn auto tracking on and should the camera power cycle or realistically be accidentally turned off and on, the auto tracking will just kick straight back in once it's powered up. Ultimately, this makes for really easy management. If the camera is permanently installed, you really don't need to have much if any, human input once it's initially set. It's perfect for the likes of lecture capture, conference spaces, and venues. It is worth noting that you can also control the auto tracking parameters from the camera's on-screen display. So if you don't have a computer to hand on the network to jump into that web UI, you can just point and click using the additional Panasonic infrared remote control. I found the performance of this tracking to work really well. It seemed really responsive, and in conjunction with Panasonic's direct drive system, the movements of the camera seem really smooth and almost organic. Of course, you don't get all of the bells and whistles that you would with a tracking system that relies on a host machine, because that requires much more processing power than what's available on board on these cameras, such as Panasonic's SF100 or 200, or the likes of MRMC's Polymotion Chat Studio. But on those systems, you can control multiple cameras from the one interface and you have the likes of facial recognition. But that's not really who this update is targeted towards. If you want just simple and reliable camera tracking, then this is a really attractive solution. It's pretty much a set and forget situation. And again, it's a free update. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, then do let us know. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and we will get back to you. Thank you very much for watching.